Hello everyone and welcome to tutorial number 20 of the Lost in the Sea series. And this is the second part of the basic AI system for a non-playable character and you can find the first part in the link I left in the description. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make the enemy move around randomly by himself and make sure he avoids obstacles. He will also choose if he stays idle or if he moves and when we start approaching him he stays in alert and if we get too close he will follow us and try to attack us. And then we're gonna try with three agents and make sure they don't mess around too much with each other. So I had to make the island a bit bigger and I also imported some rocks and trees. The rocks have a mesh collider and the trunk of the trees have a capsule collider which will do the work after a few tweaks and the rocks are parented to the island and the trees are not and this allows us to see two ways of creating obstacles for the agents. I also had to create one more box collider for the octopus since mesh collider from unity doesn't work very well and it's also a bit expensive for the performance and since I'm not using any of these assets, which are great to generate insane colliders by the way, check them out if you want. So now we want to start by adding a nav agent to the octopus. And we can see that it has already created a, a cylinder collider. And we have to adjust it more or less to our agent, to our octopus, to our NPC. And uh, Unity provides us options like the radius, height, base offset which can be very useful actually and I recommend that you put it with the same level as the box collider and the rest is the speed which controls the speed of our agent the angular speed controls the speed of the rotation when he is turning to the left or to the right and the acceleration it's the maximum acceleration when following a path so now let's move on to the navigation panel and if it's closed we can go to the window and at the bottom select navigation. And let's just focus on bake, the rest is very simple, it's just the filters and the layers and the agent radius has to be equal to the radius we set in our octopus or at least very close since it will determine if he can pass between narrow paths. And agent 8 has also to be equal to the 8 of our NPC. Now the max slope, if I make it higher, it almost covers all the sides of the island as you can see. And if I make it low, pretty much says to the agents that they can't go there, it's a downhill, it's a ramp. Step I works in the following way, if the geometry is lower than this value, then you can't go there agent, it's too high for you. So after you have set up this according to your agent, let's bake. And as you can see nothing appears, nothing changes. That's because we need to select the island and in the top right corner select static. And do the same for the rocks, also put them as static. Now if we go back to bake we can see it generate this light blue mesh, which is where our agents can move. And since the rocks are parented to the island, Unity also generated our mesh counting with the rocks. For the objects that can't be parent to the island or are in movement and can't be set to static, we have the nav mesh obstacle. That in this case, the shape will be a capsule and we can copy the values of the capsule collider we created earlier. And then we just need to check carve. I did the same for the other tree and now if we go back to bake, we have our mesh well set up and ready for the next step. You can press play and see that the octopus moves around, even without the destination, which is quite frustrating by the way. So the next step is creating a few destination points with a cube and we can put one right in the middle, another right here almost between those two rocks and one behind this tree one near this rock and the last one almost behind this rock too. And the idea is that the destination points are in a place where the agent can go, he can walk and you can put as many as you want and almost anywhere. And after creating them we can parent them to an empty called destination points, select every cube like this and uncheck mesh renderer. 
and erase the box colliders. Now let's open the script we created in the last tutorial, which I left a link in the description. And the first thing we want to do is add this line using system.collections.generic so we can use lists. And we want to create a list of game objects called destination points. Let's add a private nav mesh agent called agent and say that as soon as the script starts, we want to cache the nav mesh agent of the object that holds the script. And first thing we want to do with the nav mesh is disable it. We want the octopus to be idle. When in alert state, we want also to make sure the nav mesh agent is turned off. But now, when the octopus is moving, we want to enable the nav mesh agent and use his navigation system to chase us and avoid obstacles which means we can comment this out or simply erase it. And if you are in range of being attacked, we want to set the destination of the agent to ourselves, to the player.transform.position. In the idle, we want to turn idle on only if it's false and if the nav mesh agent component is disabled, since we don't want the agent to be moving around in an idle state. Now we can press play, see how these modifications affect the behavior of our octopus and if we get closer he is in alert state and if we get even closer he starts chasing us. Now we leave him behind and he stops moving and enters in idle state. Ok, that's working well but as you may notice when he's not following us he's always idle. So let's make him choose between being idle or moving around like if he was patrolling. So let's add the destination points to our list and say we have 5 game objects and start adding them. So let's add a public float called remaining distance and you're gonna see it in a moment why we need it. Let's also add a min time and a max time for the octopus to decide if he keeps being idle or if he's going to move. And finally we create a private integer called selected destination. Let's go down here and create a public I enumerator called random movement. And let's create an integer called index that is going to receive a random number from the minimum time and the maximum time that we will choose in the inspector. And just for curiosity, let's create a log to the console to know how much was this random time. And let's type in yield, return new wait for seconds and not wait for fix and update like I did and which I'm going to fix in a couple of seconds. So, so this will wait an amount of random time between the minimum time and the maximum time we will set. Now we need another integer that is going to have a random range between 1 and 3. So it means it's a 50-50 chance of being idle or moving. Now we want to create a switch and say that case 1 then keeps being idle and calls this function again and break. Case 2 he picks a random destination and moves. So in the case 1 we basically say start coroutine random movement and we can send a message to the console saying keep idle. And in case 2 debug.log move so we know he's moving and we want to enable the nav mesh agent component since we want our NPC to move without hitting obstacles and using the nav mesh we bake it. Now let's select a random destination from 0 to the destination points dot count. So this means it will choose between one of the cubes we have created and let's set the destination of our agent to the destination point select destination dot transform dot position. So we are basically randomly selecting one of the cubes we created and set the destination of our octopus to that random cube. Let's copy these set bulls and turn everything to false except the is walking. And we also need to copy start coroutine random movement to the idle state so when he is idle he can decide if he keeps idle or if he's going to move. And in the inspector, select a minimum time, something like 2, and max time 7 will do the work. Let's see how this works so far. So, see how he waits 5 seconds and then decides to keep idle 2 more seconds. 
and then he keeps being idle uh, yes this is random so we have to wait and see if the 50 50 chance selects moving oh and he is moving right now but see how he keeps moving and moving and moving well now we need to see if he has arrived at his destination and let him again decide if he wants to keep idle or moving so let's in the update function say that if the nav mesh agent component is active and if the agent remaining distance is less than the remaining distance that we are going to set in the inspector then we want to turn off the nav mesh agent component and set is walking boolean to false and is idle to true and let's send to the console something saying arrived and start the coroutine random movement now let's say in the inspector that the remaining distance is 1 so this basically means when he is one value from the destination point he will stop so let's press play and we can see that when he arrives at his destination it logs arrived and now he stays at a random time idle and then decides if he wants to keep idle or move on to the next random destination point and if we interact with him he stays alert and then he starts following us trying to attack us and as soon as we leave him behind he goes back to patrolling and that's good but there is still a problem it may not have happened here on screen but sometimes when choosing a new destination point we want to make sure he doesn't choose the same destination point and going back to the script we say that we want to create a local integer name and last destination that is going to be equal to selected destination now we say that while selected destination is equal to the last destination we will randomize again we want to choose another destination point until he finds a different destination point from the last one now what if we want another octopus another agent so let's go ahead and duplicate this octopus and put it somewhere where he can walk and if we press play they would sometimes choose the same destination point and that's not good so let's create a script called destination point script let's open it and erase the start and update functions and create a public bool called is used now if we go back to our ai script in this while we are going to say that why the selected destination is equal to the last destination or the selected destination point dot get component destination point script dot is used equals true then we want to shovel again we want to select another random destination because either it is equal to the last destination point or is being used that destination point and now as soon as possible when he finds one which is not being used we are going to say that the last destination point is no longer being used and the other agent can use it and we want to set him to this new destination and say that this new selected destination is being used now let's even duplicate another agent another octopus and place it somewhere like this oh but first don't forget to select all the cubes and assign the new script okay now that we have our three agents in walkable areas let's press play and see how this works let me just hide and see what they are doing and if you take a closer look you see those red lines between the octopuses which are amazing because that tell us that they are acknowledging each other and avoiding each other and that's great now let's interact with one of them and it's working he tries to attack us when we are in an attacking range now let me just run away and he probably goes back to his life of patrolling yes and well it's working guys they are avoiding each other they are selecting available destination points they avoid obstacles and they even interact with us so that's great we have a basic ai system for patrolling agents that can attack us if we get closer to them so that's it guys maybe there will be a third part of the ai tutorial but anyway subscribe for more game development related tutorials and thanks for watching guys see you in the next tutorial